In this tutorial, we're going to be looking at how you can connect multiple push buttons to a single Arduino input in order to free up some IO for other components. Using this method, you can reliably connect up to around 50 push buttons to a single Arduino analog input. Your code will be a bit more complicated, but this allows you to connect additional shields, displays, actuators, or servos without filling up your IO with push buttons. Let's start off by looking at the circuit. Each push button requires a resistor. These should ideally be the same resistance, but you can use slightly different resistors as well. So for example, you could use a mixture of 220, 270 and 300 ohm resistors, but not 220 and 3K resistors together. You're going to connect your resistors in series, with one end connected to your Arduino's ground pin and the other to 5 volts. You then connect one side of each push button to a resistor connection and connect the other sides of the push buttons together and then connect them to an analog input. In this example, we're going to be using analog input zero. Using this method, you can see that when the first push button is closed, your analog input is going to see the potential difference between ground and the other side of the first resistor. Because we're using the same value resistors, this will be roughly equal to one volt in this example. The second push button reads across the first two resistors, which will be roughly 2 volts, and so on. You can see that we now have an easy way to identify which of the five push buttons are being pushed using a single input. Let's try and assemble the circuit on a breadboard to see if we can get it to work. I'm going to use three LEDs to indicate which of the five push buttons have been pressed. We'll use a combination of two LEDs to indicate one of the larger push buttons and a single LED for each of the smaller push buttons. We'll be using only 220 ohm resistors in this tutorial, as they can be used for both the buttons and the LEDs. The board I'm going to be using is an Arduino Uno, as this is one of the most widely used and commonly available boards. This method does work on any Arduino board with an available analog input. Let's start by putting our push buttons onto the breadboard. Now let's add the LEDs. Remember that the longer leg is the positive side of the LED, which is called the anode. Now let's add the resistors. We're going to need 5 for the push buttons and another 3 for the LEDs. Start by making your resistor voltage divider, making sure that your resistors are joints along one of the lines which are also connected to the terminals on your push buttons. On my board, I've used the top right terminal on each push button. You can see that my first resistor is connected directly to ground on my board, and then we have a connection to one leg on each of the push buttons. To complete the bridge, we need to connect the last resistor to 5 volts with a jumper. Now let's connect the resistor to the negative side or the cathode of each LED.
All of our components are now in place. We just need to connect them together using our jumpers. Let's start by connecting the top and bottom 0 and 5 volt rails together. Then connect the LEDs to the IO pins on your Arduino. I'm using pins 2, 3 and 4. We can now connect our Arduino's ground and 5V pins to the breadboard. And finally, connect the opposite terminals of your push buttons together and then to one of your analog inputs. I'm using input A0. Now let's have a look at the code. We start by defining the pin numbers. Then we set up the IO pins in the setup function as well as starting the serial communication. Serial communication is used during the initial setup to see what the actual measured value is for each push button so that you can adjust the limits in your code. In the main loop function, we take a measurement from the analog input which is stored in a variable called temp and is then displayed on the serial monitor. We then have an if statement which decides which push button has been pressed based on some limits. These should be values roughly in the middle of those displayed on the serial monitor. To start with, you'll just need to put in 5 sequential values between 0 and 1023. The if statement compares the measured value to the stated limits, and once it finds a statement which is true, it then ignores all the remaining statements. So if we have a measured value of 330 for example, it is not less than 150, it is not less than 250, but it is then less than 350. So the code in that part of the statement would be executed, turning the green and red LEDs off and the blue LED on. Let's upload the code and try it out on our breadboard. Once the code was uploaded, the blue and red LEDs immediately came on, which doesn't seem right. Without any of the switches closed, the analog input should read 0 volts and none of the LEDs should be turned on. We can also see that we get erratic results when pushing the push buttons, and there's a delay in turning the LEDs off again once the button is released. If we open up the serial monitor, we can see that the measured value without any input is way higher than zero, and fluctuates quite a lot. It stabilizes a little when we push a button, and you can see it stabilize around 180 when we push the first button, and around 390 when we push the second button. You can also see that the measured value sparks a little when the button is released and then takes a while to go back down. This is because we've left the branch connected to A0 floating. We need to add another resistor between 0 volts and this branch to bring it back down to 0 volts when there are no buttons pushed. We'll do this on our breadboard by adding another resistor between 0 volts and the analog input side of our push buttons. You may have noticed that the blue and red LEDs have now turned off. Try pressing the push buttons and you'll see that they all work correctly now, turning on and off reliably and quickly. If we look at the values displayed in the serial monitor, we can see that we're now getting a reliable zero when no buttons pushed and a much more stable reading when each button is pushed. One downside or limitation to this method, which we haven't discussed yet, is that you won't be able to recognize multiple buttons being pushed at the same time. If you try to push two buttons at once, the Arduino will only recognize the input from the one providing the highest voltage, in our case the button furthest to the right. 
Now you know how to connect up the 50 push buttons to a single Arduino input, freeing up more of your I.O. for other devices and components to allow you to build more complex projects. Let me know what other projects you're working on in the comments below, and consider subscribing to my channel to follow my tech and electronics projects and tutorials.